Welcome class. In this lesson, we are going to be introduced to the study of angles. What are angles? You ever wonder how these gigantic bridges manage to support so much weight, millions of cars driving across them every year? Or how these cool modern houses manage to stand even though they don't have that much material and yet you know they're strong, they're energy efficient? Well, a lot of that has to do with the engineering and architecture, the design of these structures that use geometry in very clever ways to make things stronger and lighter and more beautiful. So today we're going to study one part of geometry and that part is called angles. Now angles are a measurement of how something turns. The easiest way to think about measuring something that turns is to think about is to think about a, a person turning around. So I might be sitting in a swivel chair and spin around like that. Um, but why don't you just, for a moment here, go ahead and stand up for one minute. I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, I'm going to stand up here. I'm going to turn myself around. I just turned. And that turning is something you can measure. If I put my hand out, I can see that my hand is moving while I'm turning. And I can measure how far my hand is turning around. I can measure how far I am turning. So there's lots of ways to see how you measure something that turns. Let's, let's see what some, some turns that we're real familiar with look like. Maybe you've heard of somebody doing a 360 move on a snowboard. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Here's a picture of uh, a little video of someone doing a 360. He's actually doing a kind of a fancier trick than a 360, but they are spinning around all the way around. And when you spin all the way around, we say that you spin 360 degrees. So you're spinning in a whole circle, and that circle is chopped up into 360 little pieces. Kind of like you know how a foot is chopped up into 12 inches? Well, when we measure circles, they're chopped up into 360 uh, little pieces. We call them degrees. We don't call them inches or, or kilometers or uh, millimeters. We call them uh, degrees. So, you know, I mean, when you, when you understand how to uh, spin your body, you can do some really cool tricks. Uh, you can also do some kind of, ew, some not so cool tricks. Uh, and you can also do some really cool slam dunks. So spinning is, a, is really a very big uh, part of, and turning, I should say, is a big part of athletics. And so uh, measuring turning is something that we do very often in, um, in sports, especially. Um, but uh, it, it, that measurement of degrees is also something that uh, is very useful for um, engineering and architecture and building things. Because when you want to build things, um, you you want to make sure that things are uh, kind of constructed in the right way. Um, so if you're building a house, you want to make sure that your roof has a slant so the rain drips off of it. And if you're building a house, you want to make sure your floor is flat so that you can uh, walk around safely. So. You see here, I'm going to take my circle, I'm going to close my circle all the way, and as I'm closing it, the number's getting smaller and smaller. We say when we do that that the angle is getting smaller. Do you see how it's shrinking? It's kind of squishing down like a mouth closing. Rah, rah, rah. And uh, when it gets small enough, uh, it gets close to zero. Now, of course, we can go the other way and make it bigger, 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 all the way around. If we go far enough, we will get to 360 degrees. That's a very big circle now. There's 360 degrees. That, that means I went all the way around. I'll do it again. So imagine I'm imagine we're looking on the top, the top of someone's head. See that circle in the middle? What if that's someone's head? We're looking at them and they are turning around right now. They're turning, turning, turning. If they turn all the way around, they have turned 360 degrees. That's what that that's what that means. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna show you a couple things here. Well, first we'll go back to um, first we'll go back to our slideshow here. So, <clears throat> I 
there's a, a few names. Uh, there's some names for different angles. Uh, an acute angle, actually let's start with a, a right angle. A right angle, uh, it meets at a square. A right angle is what you might notice if you look up at your ceiling right now. Uh, the wall and the ceiling, they come together in a right angle to make a square. Now if you shrink smaller than a right angle, we call that an acute angle. It means it's less than 90 degrees, and I'll show you what that means in a minute here. And we say that they're very small, so you might even think of them as being really cute. Now if your angle is greater than 90 degrees, we call it obtuse. Obtuse means wide. And here we see an obtuse angle that is wider than a right angle. If you stretch your, your uh, angle way out, uh, it becomes a straight angle. That's 180 degrees. And if you keep going past a straight angle, it becomes a reflex angle. And if you spin all the way around, if you turn all the way around, it becomes a full rotation. Now I have a nice little way of testing, just by looking at angles, whether or not they are uh, right angles, or if they're less than 90 degrees, if they're smaller than right, or greater than right, greater than 90 degrees. I've got this little guy up here, I see him, his name is Mr. Bojangles. And uh, he's the right angle ruler, he's pretty cool. Now we can use him, he's kind of a cool little tool that we can use, he comes in handy. Oh wait, what's that? Why should you always trust Mr. Bojangles? Uh, why? Why do you think we should always trust Mr. Bojangles? Oh, because he's always right. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. Now, we can actually use a tool like a little right angle, uh, like Mr. Bojangles there, to uh, to measure. Um, and I'm going to try to do that right now. So I'm actually going to back up here. I'm going to show you how we can use an angle like that to measure. So if I if I tap on that little guy, he's actually a little ruler I can move around. And if I line him up here just so, um, I can actually bring him down right here. And if you take a right angle and you put it on top of another right angle, what do you notice? You notice that they match up. And the other little angle kind of disappears behind this angle. See that? Now, what happens if I take Mr. Bojangles, my little right angle ruler, and I set it on an acute triangle? Let's try that out and see what happens. If I set it on an acute triangle, notice how the acute triangle is smaller than my, uh, my little ruler there, Mr. Bojangles? It's smaller. See how it kind of goes right in between his nose? If it was a right angle, it would go straight up and down. It would, it would line up perfectly with his angle. But it's not. It's smaller than that. And if I take that little ruler, and if I place it on top of an obtuse angle like this, you'll notice one of the angles from the obtuse angle, you know, it's obtuse means wide, you'll notice one of them is poking out from behind. One of them is poking out from behind. So when you're walking around your house, if you're trying to figure out, you know, is uh, an angle acute or obtuse or right, find uh, something that has a right angle that you know is square, something like a book or a picture frame, or tons of things, lots of things, a ruler, lots of things have a right angle, lots of things have a square angle on them, and just line them up with things and see if, uh, see if they are bigger or smaller than your right angle. All right, moving on. So, <clears throat> um, if we take a look again at, at uh, our kind of little ruler, this this cool ruler down here. I can actually turn it into a, a ruler that has all the degrees. You see there's 0, 15 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, there's 90 degrees. Do you see that on top there, 90 degrees? And see, it tells us that it's, an, it's a right angle. I'm going to give you this tool to play with because I think it'd be very helpful for you to play with this as well and, and experiment with these different angles. See how if it's right and I get smaller, becomes acute. And notice that it says 90 degrees is a right angle. Look at what happens to my uh, acute angle. Look at that number. It's less than 90. Is 75 less than 90? Yes. Is 20 less than 90? Yes. Let's go back to 90 again. All right, how about obtuse angles? Let's try that out. Is 135 greater than 90? It is. And look, obtuse angle is what uh, this ruler's indicating here. 
Is 165 greater than 90? It sure is. So in your math notebook, um, I'd like you to, uh, to maybe pause the video here for a moment. And uh, let's back up just a little bit and, and just jot down a few notes here. And if you need to rewind, you can. Um, I'm going to go back to our last slide there. Uh, it's very important that you have some notes about uh, of what a right angle is, an acute angle, an obtuse angle, and you can include straight and reflex and full as well. So I think you need to uh, pause the video here and uh, label your page um, uh, the uh, study of an angle. And you need to make sure that you have definitions for uh, the types of angles. And uh, there'll be a link here to play around with this tool as well. And you can uh, play with this as well and just kind of get comfortable with these different types of angles. All right. So once you have those written down in your notebook, some notes, maybe some drawings, maybe you, your acute angle has uh, is really cute. You draw a cute little, uh, a cute little character that has less than ninety degrees. Maybe you could draw a cool little Mr. Bojangles like I did. All right, moving on. So here's the names of the angles. We already talked about that. All right, how about the parts of an angle? Now, <clears throat> angles originate at a vertex. You might remember from last year, a vertex is like a point. Now, uh, um, uh, a vertice is a, is a point where two lines meet, or in this case, two rays meet. So there's that, there's that vertice right there. And... Um, it's kind of like a vertex, I think of having, starting with a V, and it's that sharp, it's basically a V. If you turn this on its side here, your iPad a little bit, really the angle's making a V. So that kind of helps you remember that that point there is called a vertex. It's the point where these two rays, these two rays meet, these two arms. Now the straight sides, they're technically in, in geometry terms, they're called rays because they have an end point at the vertex where they stop. But then you notice those arrows, those arrows, arrows tell us that technically that line could go on forever. And <clears throat> so we, we call that a ray, but when people are talking about angles, they use that word arm as well. And then notice, where's the actual angle itself? What is the thing we're actually measuring? And you'll notice it's that curved space between those two arms. That's what we're measuring here. Um, so the angle is the amount of turn between each arm. So you can imagine these, as they get closer, the angle gets smaller. As they get further apart, the angle gets bigger. That's, I got that, that uh, link on the bottom there that you can play around with too.